Hello everyone and welcome to the junior and early teen lesson called Through Thick and Thin. If you haven't already, please scroll down, click subscribe, and hit the bell so that you get notifications when new content is uploaded on this channel. While you're down there, check out the description and you'll find the links to both the junior and the early teen Sabbath school lesson for this week. This lesson here in this video will cover points of both of them. However, if you want to look into one or both of them more in depth at home with your friends or family or whoever you're watching this with, click on those links and please do so. When you're at those websites, you'll also find the materials for all the lessons that will be covered during this quarter from April to June. Let's get started with a question. Who do you know that will stand by you no matter what? They could be a friend, a family member, someone at your church, someone at your school. Who do you know who will stand by you, stick with you through the good times and the bad times? Who will stand with you through thick and thin? At this time, please pause the video and have that discussion with your friends, family, whoever it is that you're watching this video with. And please don't forget to put your answers down in the comments below so that I can see what you had to say. Once there's a few comments down there, I'll go and join the discussion down in the comments, sharing some of the people that fit that description in my life. I'd answer that question here in the video, but I have been blessed with a number of family and friends who I believe fit that description for me. I only hope and pray that I can fit the description for them as well. We started with that question today because Jesus wants to be that type of friend for you. Honestly, that's one of the key points that sticks out to me the most in the Christian faith. That Jesus Christ, Savior, Creator, Sustainer of the world, wants to be my friend. Wants to be your friend. He wants to be friends with us, his children. With that concept in mind, while it's, I think, super cool that um, he wants to be our friend, it can also be a little intimidating at times. As I said, he is Savior, Creator, and Sustainer, but he also wants to be your friend. And I don't know about you, but balancing those two ideas sometimes makes me a little confused about what I should pray about, or what I should pray for, or what I should talk with him about. Luckily for us, Jesus' disciples asked him the same question. How do we pray? And that's when he shared with them the set of verses that we now call the Lord's Prayer. There are actually two accounts of the Lord's Prayer found in the Bible. You can find one in the Gospel of Matthew and find another in the book of Luke. Today, we're going to be looking at the one found in Matthew. If you want to turn there too, um, turn to Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. If you need more time to find these verses, feel free to pause the video so you can look it up in either a physical copy or a digital one. Once you've found it, I encourage you to read these verses all at once. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. I'm telling you to do that on your own because here in this video, we're going to take it piece by piece, verse by verse. If you need more time to find this passage or to read it for yourself all at once, go ahead and pause the video now. Now we're going to take a look at the Lord's Prayer, piece by piece, verse by verse, and see what each line says about what we should pray to God about. Matthew 6, verse 9 says, Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We're to refer to God as our Father, someone who cares about us, someone who protects us. Yes, someone who occasionally disciplines us as well, but it's all out of love, because he loves us. We're also supposed to worship him, lift his name high, praising him in songs, in worship, in uh, our words and our actions too. We are to praise him because he is worthy of our praise and because it also blesses us too. It's hard to describe, but there's a calming, peaceful presence that comes along with truly praising God. I think it might be related to the fact that, you know how when you do nice things for someone else, you feel good inside too? I think it's a little bit related to that. When we do nice things for God, when we say nice things about him and to him, I think it makes us feel good too. So God's not being selfish when he wants us to praise him. He's doing it because he wants us to feel better. He wants us to be blessed from the experience. And also he wants to know that we love him too and respect him and care about him as well. Just like any relationship, a relationship with God is not a one-way street. God loves us more than we could ever love him, but we should be loving him too. Verse 10 says, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth 
as it is in heaven. God wants us to talk to him about what's going on. Talk to him about current events, whether it's at a global or national level or a personal level. And while you're talking about what's happening here on earth and what's happening in heaven, ask God that what he wants to have happen is what is happening. Ask for God to be in control of earth's events and ask for his will to happen here on this earth, despite the sinful nature that we're all living in. Verse 11 says, give us this day our daily bread. From this we see that God wants to know about our needs, what we need to survive, what we need um, for ourselves, for our friends, for our family, for our ministries. I think we can also take from this that he wants to know our wants and desires, and maybe separate them from the needs, but talk to God about what you feel you need, what you feel you want, and remember that he ultimately knows better than we do about what we truly need. But that doesn't change the fact that he wants to hear from us that we are truly relying on him to be our provider. Verse 12 reads, And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Talk to God about when you mess up, when you do something wrong, when you give in to temptation. Please don't be afraid to bring stuff like that before God because we know from his word that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He wants to hear about our shortcomings, not to hold it against us, but to help us move on, to help us grow as a person, and to help us grow as one of his children. He also wants to hear about our interactions with other people. Yes, he wants to hear that we're being nice to them and forgiving them when they wrong us, but I think we can also take from this passage that we should pray to God about how to interact with other people in general, not just when forgiveness is at stake. Because if we pray about our interactions with people before we interact with them, maybe there won't be any need for forgiveness because you won't accidentally wrong them and they won't accidentally wrong you or intentionally <laughs> wrong each other. So pray to God about your interactions with people, whether it's something silly, whether it's something serious or anywhere in between. Take your friendships and your interactions with other people to God. And finally, verse 13 says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This one kind of connects to what I said about the previous verse. If we pray about our interactions with people, then maybe we can avoid falling into temptation and where forgiveness may be required. But what you can also get from this verse is that we are to pray for protection from the devil and his servants. Not only that, but we should pray to be delivered from those situations. When the devil and his demons are bogging us down with temptations, we should take that to God, ask to be saved from that situation. And also, we do live in a sinful world, which means from this verse, I think God's also telling us that we can be real with him. We don't have to put on a mask, put on a certain face, act like everything is okay and then everything's fine. We can talk to him about what truly is troubling us. Rightly or wrongly, sometimes we feel that we have to put a mask on when we go to school or church or with certain friends or with certain family members. And I really do hope and pray that you have family and friends that you don't need to do that with. But even if there's no one else, you can be real with God. You don't have to hide anything. He knows it anyways. You don't have to fake it because he already knows your heart. You can be real with him, with your thoughts, with your feelings, and with your circumstances, and with your life. We can be real with God because he wants to be our friend through the good times and through the bad times. And from God's perspective, you might as well accept his friendship because he's already with you through those times, through both the good and the bad. For proof of that, there are a number of different verses in the Bible you can turn to, but today we're going to turn to Acts chapter 8. While you're turning there, I'll give you a bit of context. The early Christian church has started and is forming uh, in Jerusalem, and unfortunately, persecution has started as well. The chapter before where we're turning, Acts 7, talks about Stephen, the first uh, recorded martyr of the Christian faith. That means he was killed because of his belief in Christ. One of the individuals taking part, an active part, in this persecution was a man named Saul. You may know him better as Paul, after his road to Damascus experience in Acts chapter 9, but before that his name was Saul 
and he was persecuting Christians. If you need more time turning to Acts chapter 8, feel free to pause the video now. I encourage you to read the whole chapter uh, at some point. We're only going to focus on the first eight verses, but the whole chapter has a lot of good stuff and a lot of good stories in it. Please follow along as I read for you Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. And Saul approved of his execution, the him in that being Stephen from the previous chapter. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. For unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many who had them, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. Either when this lesson is done, or right now if you want to pause the video, I encourage you to read the rest of chapter 8 because it shares a bit more about what God was doing through Philip. Even during that dark time of persecution, God was with his people. Not only that, but he was there strengthening them, empowering them to continue doing the mission that he called them to do. And we see an example of that in these verses. God was using Philip to do incredible things. He was using Philip to remove demons from people. God used Philip to perform healings. It says here that many were healed, uh, even those who were paralyzed. And ultimately, God was using Philip to preach the good news about Christ. And I love verse 8, so there was much joy in that city. Not only was God with Philip and his other followers during the bad time of persecution, but he was with him during the good times of proclaiming the message and performing these healings. And God was able to bring good things out of something bad. Persecution was bad, but God was able to do good things even through it. Being persecuted caused them to spread out, leave Jerusalem. As God commanded them to take this message of hope, this message of Jesus Christ, to the world, that's what they started doing. God was able to make good things come even out of something bad like being persecuted. God was able to make good things happen even during these bad times. So please accept Jesus Christ as your savior and accept him as your friend, your ultimate friend who will be with you through the good times and the bad ones, through thick and thin. Ask yourself what you can change about your prayer life to start talking with God as if he's one of your closest friends. Not only that, but during this time of quarantine, ask God what good things he can do through you. Just as God continued doing good things through Philip and his other disciples and followers during that terrible time of persecution. Ask these questions of yourself, ask them in prayer to God, and once again, feel free to talk about it with your friends, family, whoever you're watching this video with. But ultimately, Remember to keep in touch with God, your savior and your very best friend, who will be with you through the good times and who'll be with you through the bad ones too. Please bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you for your love and your care and your forgiveness, and I thank you for wanting to be our friend. Please help us to want to be your friend too, Father. Thank you for being with us, uh, whether things are going well or whether things are going poorly. Please help us to keep in touch with you, whether um, we're in a good time or a bad time of our life. Also, please show us what it is that you want us to do. Please help us to follow you and be able to do good things for you, no matter what may be going on in the world right now. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to our junior and early teen lesson called Through Thick and Thin. Now, normally when you leave juniors or early teens out of school, you're handed a guide magazine. Since I can't do that through the screen, you can find a link to a digital guide in the description box. The link is guidemagazine.org. Go ahead, click on that link, and it'll take you to all the fun stories and facts that you'd normally get in a hard copy. While you're down there, please click subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notifications when new content is uploaded. Please also give us a like, a comment below, and share this video with others you think might enjoy it. 
And to all our viewers, I'd like to say, we're praying for you. God bless. See you later on this channel.